about to set sail on the world's first fully electric tugboat. Now these unsung heroes of the harbour have a hugely important task, escorting countless container ships and carriers out of the port so they can transport, get this, 10 to 11 billion tonnes of stuff annually. That's more than a tonne per person across the whole world. So the question is, what kind of impact can these clean, quiet, fully electric tugboats have on our precious and beautiful waterways? Well, we're here in North Vancouver to find out, and this is The Fully Charged Show. Love The Fully Charged Show? Then join us live in Canada this September, the South in October, and Australia and London in 2025. So this is the High Sea Wellness and it's joined by its two other Electra 2800 electric tugboat siblings, the Weejit and the Brave. And they are the world's first all-electric tugboat fleet. Now, I grew up in Southampton where there is a port and I always thought it was really strange that there were these relatively small tugboats pulling these enormous container ships. But it turns out, actually, you need these very, very agile boats because big container ships and carriers are optimised for high speeds and not for manoeuvring in tight channels and canals and harbours. And that's where they need to call upon their very, very agile tugboat swap team. Tugboats are the workhorses of the industry. They're, uh, they're everything, you know, global trade, everything we wear, everything we touch is, comes on ships. and. Uh, if there's no tugs, there's no way that the large ships can bring product in and, and service. So, you know, we at Seasband believe they're guardians of, of all the harbours, guardians of the inlet, which is where these uh, vessels will go in the Douglas Channel. Um, it's absolutely essential. It's an essential service. Traditional tugboats are fueled by diesel generators. There's more tugboats than any other vessels in the world, obviously, because it's a three to one ratio usually, three tugboats or two tugboats dock one ship at a time. So when you talk about the global scale, uh, you have thousands and thousands of tugboats all powered with diesel generators. We're about to head down into the belly of the boat to see where the real magic happens and to see all of the batteries. The Electra 2800 is a brand new type of electric tugboat designed by naval architecture firm Robert Allen based here in Vancouver. But of course, like many of these things, they are a collaboration between loads and loads of different partners, including Corvus, who are responsible for the batteries here. And that's where we are. We are inside the battery room. There's one on this side of the boat and there's another one on the other side of the boat. But in total, there are 5,288 kilowatt hours of battery, so about the equivalent of 100 mid-size EVs and they are charged in Kitimat with 1.2 megawatt charger which means that these can be charged in around four hours. So we're about to go into where the motors are and this is a watertight door so really make sure that if there were heaven forbid any challenge no water is getting into that room there. In here are two 3,000 horsepower motors and that's what you can see here and there is another one over there. They are l shaft so that means that the, the motor spinning that way, it goes down a drive shaft to the propellers going that way, hence the l shaft Here we have two enormous diesel generators and I know that's not very typical for what we cover here on the Fully Charged show but these have the purpose of acting as backup. So say for whatever reason you're in the middle of nowhere, the batteries are empty, this, these would generate electricity to charge those batteries or to power the electric motor directly. Embarking on an electric tug program uh, was challenging. This is the oldest industry in the world, so change is not uh, great, uh, uh, greatly accepted, let's say. But um, people started to wrap their heads around it, and, and largely it's the same. Uh, and, you know, they're a bit higher torque, and in the design phase, 
Um, we actually had to tune the tugs down to act like normal tugs. I'll never forget when the first day we had one of our C-SPAN Mariners come on, one of our captains, and they were the first person to drive it. Uh, they actually lost one of their, their senses, one of their muscle memories, which was that ramp up of sound uh, and the vibrations and everything. And um, they kind of lost that piece, but kind of in a good way, just retraining themselves. And now these tugs work every day in the harbor and it's just a huge success. The Electra 2800 tugboats have received something called an underwater noise notation from the American Bureau of Shipping. And that's something that measures the underwater noise pollution in order to protect marine life. Now this is so quiet, which is so important because this is a haven for marine life. And in fact, it's one of the quietest vessels operating on the BC coast. And in fact, you need 10 of these to be equivalent in noise to one diesel tugboat. We decided to undertake this project for a couple of reasons. Um, C-SPAN is a really old company. We've been working in British Columbia for 130 years. And, uh, you know, all over the, the, the coast here, we have coastal First Nations that we've always worked in their territories and alongside. And uh, we've been working with the Heisla Nation for many years before that. And together we decided that we wanted to kind of change how this specific industry is done and, um, you know, base it on the pillars of you know, protection of the environment, generational employment for the coastal First Nations, and, uh, you know, lead in technology. The rest is history. We're seeing these in Vancouver, but these are actually going to be operating in North Kitimat, the traditional territory of the Heisla Nation. And they are, in fact, going to be the guardians of the Douglas Channel, the longest escort route in the whole world at 159 nautical miles. And that's where the name High Sea comes from, because this is a collaboration or a joint venture between C-SPAN, who specialise in marine transportation, and the Heiser Nation, who are the majority owner and operator. These were communities that suffered greatly in the residential school system, and there's generational trauma there. And for them to have ships like this come back to their territory and give them an opportunity to return to the water with you know, stable income, a stable program, a good company to work for, on world-class vessels. It's been quite a draw and we're seeing the change in, in the communities. This project is just one of many ongoing vital economic reconciliation efforts with the Indigenous peoples who throughout Canadian history have faced countless harms. The Douglas Channel is critically important to the Heisen Nation both from a spiritual and traditional perspective and in fact Heisen literally means dwellers downstream. And ongoing protection of this area is a commitment held for future generations by every Heisler member. So it's unsurprising that the chance to operate the cleanest and quietest electric tugboat fleet was deeply appealing, and not least because this is a whale-watching paradise. And the Douglas Channel is one of the most important habitats for the humpback whale and fin whales. Yeah, so what happens next is more. More, more vessels uh, that have the environment in mind Everybody wants to talk about the electric tugs. So, you know, our competitors have now followed suit in the harbor here. They have electric tugs. We're going to build more electric tugs. But again, it's it's location specific. You know, the, uh, I will be the first to say an electric tug doesn't work everywhere. It will not work at a terminal where you have to dock 10 ships in a day. It just, you'll have too much time. So I think you'll see a lot more kind of location specific builds like, okay, where is this tug going to operate? How can we design it specifically with the environment in mind, but also for the task at hand? This is an absolutely incredible initiative, but there is one quite big notable caveat that's worth mentioning. These electric tugboats are going to be escorting LNG carriers at a brand new facility up in Kitimat. And whilst of course we can argue that LNG is displacing much dirtier coal, it is still contributing to global warming and CO2 into the atmosphere. So of course, whilst we want more electric tugboats, they can't solely transform the entire marine or energy industry. Greener isn't always perfect, but in this instance, at least they're escorting us in the right direction. Let us know what you think in the comments. Please do like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching.